All right, guys, you haven't missed a thing. thing. The CDC put out a new poster stating, Droplet spread happens when germs traveling inside droplets that are coughed or sneezed from a sick person enter the eyes, nose, or mouth of another person. Droplets travel short distances, less than three feet, that's one meter for those in Europe, from one person to another. Pause. Well, didn't Obama say that you can't catch it from a bus? Well, what if somebody sneezes and it lands on a railing and you grab the railing? It can live, as we just pointed out, for 51 days. Looks like Obama might have lied to me. A person might also get infected by touching a surface or object that has germs on it and then touching their mouth or nose. Just like I have said since May. Clean and disinfect commonly touched surfaces like doorknobs, faucet handles, and toys since the Ebola virus may live on surfaces for up to several hours. No, as we just pointed out, 51 days, as I've been saying since May. Merrill Ness, MD, a board-certified internist and biological warfare epidemiologist and expert in anthrax, comments, quote, CDC said it doesn't travel more than three feet, while at least CDC is starting to move the narrative. Maybe tomorrow it will be five feet, then ten. Maybe next month they will tell us that is why all of the victims' possessions are being incinerated and the apartments fumigated. Just remember, historically, Ebola spread fast in healthcare facilities. That is because it is airborne. Dr. Nass previously argued that the CDC has been lying about aerosol transmission of Ebola and its own 2009 publication admitted that Ebola poses a high individual risk for aerosol transmitted laboratory infections, that is airborne for you Kesha fans, and life-threatening disease that is frequently fatal for which there are no vaccines or treatments. Just like the correct views has said since May. Dailycaller.com on our Ebola update. Obama reduces the Ebola quarantine precautions. Might I add, because he's the worst president in all of recorded history, Jimmy Carter, you can relax. President Barack Obama has strong-armed New York's Democratic governor and New Jersey's Republican governor, to weaken quarantines on the movement of people who have recently been in Ebola-stricken countries. We have let the governors of New York, New Jersey, and other states know that we have concerns with the unintended consequences of policies not grounded in science. No, what they know is that it's airborne, and if you quarantine everybody, but you don't put them in separate rooms, they're going to catch it, and then you're all going to find out irrevocably that it is uh, airborne. And they don't want you to find that out. New York worthless governor Andrew Cuomo buckled Sunday afternoon because he's an idiot and doesn't know history and doesn't know that you have to contain it to cure it. Look up Michael Savage's uh, Ebola. He's an epidemiologist. It announced that travelers could serve their quarantine time at home. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who isn't much better, we'll get to that in a minute, retreated late Sunday night and approved home quarantines, which we've already shown that people are just leaving their house. In both states, the home quarantines will be monitored by state health officials. Yeah, well, that's worked remarkably well so far. No, it hasn't. Obama's pressure began Friday once Cuomo and Christie jointly revived the practice of isolating and quarantining travelers, which they needed to do and have now stopped, who may be carrying a communicable disease. The practice was immediately applied to a nurse who had just returned from the Ebola-stricken area. She was being a bitch, hate to be uh, blunt, and she was confined to a sealed room in a hospital. It's FCC legal. The 21-day quarantine is long enough to reassure medical officials that the person is not infected. The two governors moved to protect their state residents after a New York doctor was diagnosed with the lethal Ebola disease because they didn't do things properly, which is the way that the correct views has been saying to do them since May. The doctor had been out on the town in New York taking the subway. He went bowling shortly before he was diagnosed. Yeah, and it can live for 51 days. I hope nobody happened to use the same ball return he did at the bowling alley. The idiot. The Democratic governors of Illinois and Florida later announced similar curbs. That's because they're smart. 
Christie defended his retreat, saying he had intended to allow the people to serve their quarantine at home, which hasn't worked at all. It says New Jersey is not changing its quarantine protocol. The protocol is clear that a New Jersey resident with no symptoms but has come in contact with someone with Ebola, such as a health care provider, would be subject to a mandatory quarantine. Well, that's not what we're seeing here in real life. Listen to this. The first of two dumdies of the day. Zero hedge. First dumdy of the day goes to that idiot fat-eating swine, Christie. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie folds like a rusty lawn chair under a fat man, unquarantines the symptom-free nurse after 24 hours. Basically, this uh, C-word nurse did nothing but whine and complain. I don't want to be in quarantine. <laughs> so they let this whiny weasel out after 24 hours. They don't know whether she has Ebola or not. Uh, probably not. Does that make you feel better if you come in contact with her? Because it wouldn't me. Dumb the other day, number one. In a sudden reversal, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, one of the two dumb D's of the day, said Monday that the state will release the whiny-ass quarantined American nurse who had been confined to a hospital isolation tent. From West Africa, despite showing no signs of Ebola, if you go to that country, if you come from that country, you should be in quarantine for 41 days. If you help treat people, I don't care if my tax dollars go to give you prime rib, but you need to be locked up for 41 days. As US, USA Today reports, Casey Helicox, 33, was the first person pulled aside in the Newark Liberty International Airport on Friday. Under Christie's new strict mandatory quarantine 21 days rules, which he didn't hold up to. It appears, as Reuters reports, Christie's got a tap on the shoulder from the White House and was told that states that had imposed mandatory quarantines on some travelers from Ebola hit West Africa said the policy could impede the fight against the disease. Additionally, it is true in Legitigus, in Legitigus American style, Hillcox plans to sue. So the C word, Hillcox nurse wants to sue because she was put in quarantine. And Chris Christie let the idiot out. Why are they so afraid of us finding out that these people need to be quarantined? You could make the argument that they want a mass extinction event, that they want most of us dead. Is that true or is it not true? I don't know if it is or not. But I know that the Georgia Guidestones, look it up, has called for that. And I know that there was a stone... Uh, that was placed in the Georgia Guidestones that had said that this was the year, 2014, that they wanted to institute killing off most of the planet. And then they took the stone down and said it was a hoax. It was not a hoax. Is this the year they're going to do it, or is that conspiracy theory? I don't know, but I can tell you this. The people that know better are capitulating and allowing this to happen. There should be zero cases of Ebola in this country. And if they had listened to the correct views, there would be zero people with Ebola in the country today. I think one of the reasons, perhaps, that they're worried about this is because once you get these people together, you're going to find that other people that are coming in contact with them are going to get it in the same place. And that's going to prove that it's airborne. And if you can separate these people to some degree, and it looks like it's random, then they can downplay that. Friends, it is airborne. That's your Ebola update number six. We will be doing it, like I said, nonstop. But don't tune out because I have got, I have got one more dumdy of the day. That's because the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, which goes out once a month and will be done within the next week or so for next month, is uh, I mailed them a Dunce Cap, much like this one. And I mailed them a certificate explaining why they got the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. It goes out once a month. And then I have the Daily Dumdy. Well, I have so many Dumdies that I can't get to all of them on the next show that deals with it. So there's two of them today making it Dumdies. Amtrak wins the uh, Dumdy of the Day. Purchasing train tickets with cash is a suspicious activity. Well, I don't bank. I'm not doing anything wrong. I, I just went to 
to King's Island. Uh, how many of you have ever done ripcord? They take you up 153 feet, hooked by a shoulder harness, and then they just let you swing back and forth. You have to pull the cord yourself. You feel like you're going to die. Christelle and I just did it. Guess what? We paid for it in cash. So what, we're a terrorist? We're going to blow up the park? I'm so sick of this. How did our nation get this stupid? For those of you listening to this, how did we get this stupid? Purchasing train tickets with cash, exiting a train before our other, other passengers, or appearing calm or nervous are all examples of behavior that Amtrak em employees have been called to report as suspicious activity. Well, you might purchase... Oh, wait, 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 let's go over real quick all of the signs here. The, the behaviors that uh, the dumdies of the day at Amtrak have said are suspicious are unusual nervousness of the traveler. So if you're nervous for any reason, you could be a naturally nervous person who happens to take a train. Unusual calmness or straight ahead stare. Well, you might just be on the pharmaceuticals that they told you you needed for the imaginary manic depression. Looking around while making telephone calls. Yeah, because there's nobody in this world that cheats on their spouses and might be whispering into the phone. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it is not terroristic. Uh, position among passengers disembarking. So if you're in a hurry to get off or if your luggage is heavy and you're lagging behind, you could be a sign of a terrorist. Carrying little or no luggage. Just because you don't want to pay a fortune to store your luggage and you put it all in one bag, you could be a terrorist. In other words, give them your money. If you purchase your tickets with cash, we've already covered that. Uh, purchase tickets immediately prior to boarding. Yeah, because no one ever dies and you have to hurry up and catch a train and you're looking really depressed. Now you're looking like there's two problems. Yeah, you're, you must be a terrorist. It says such behaviors, as I've pointed out, are so ludicrously broad that virtually anyone is likely to have engaged in at least one of the above activities at some point for a perfectly innocent reason. The demonization of using cash as a tool of criminals or terrorists is also a theme that has become more prevalent in recent years. The reason they want you to use the banks and the checks and the money and the uh, credit cards is so that they can track what you buy and that the places that you are money to can more quickly vampire you. Um, it is so that they can monitor how much you're paying to student loans. It's so that they can monitor how much you're claiming on your taxes. Continue to use cash and do not allow them to take that away. Friends, look it up. That's everything that Amtrak says is a sign of a terrorist. You're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speak, signing off. Uh, look for us on Neopa Radio, where you will find uh, we are now about to be syndicated, which is awesome. Friends, make sure you donate to the show if you can. All money that you give to me goes towards a better show. The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless.